Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. This is our match preview for Aston Villa v Tottenham Hotspur at Villa Park on Saturday. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, drop this video a like and get involved in the comment section down below on everything that I discuss on this episode today. So it's a big one. This game is absolutely massive and it's... A must win, isn't it? It is literally a must win. Nothing, nothing else we can we can take from this game that's going to do us any favors in trying to get seventh or sixth for Europa Conference, Europa League. It's a game that we literally have to win. So it feels like one of the biggest games in years, should I say? Because you know, there's there's just something massive on it, and I and I think Villa Park hopefully is going to be absolutely rocking on Saturday. We've got to bring that noise. We've got to bring that intimidation. I think that's something that we've got to bring. We've just got to make sure that the atmosphere is just really loud and powerful. So um, that's one thing that I would like to see from this game. But it sets it up now. In the battle that we're in, I mean, you've got Spurs next, Liverpool and Brighton. So three of the teams that are currently above us. So I think do or die, isn't it? Do or die fixtures. So, um, you know, hopefully we can get the win against Spurs. So it's going to be a difficult game. They're pretty resurgent-ish, um, you know. He's done, a, he's done a decent job so far since he's gone in and, and he's sort of steadied the ship a little bit. I think he's done what I think Chelsea hoped Lampard would do and add that little bit of unity, that little bit of that, that feel of togetherness. I think he sort of brought that together, Ryan Mason. So I think fair play um, to him on that front. But he's coming up against Unai Emery. And if I had to have an Unai Emery and a Ryan Mason matchup tactically, where are you going? You're going down Unai Emery, aren't you? So Unai will have a plan to beat Spurs. And I think it's one of those games where you would hope that the levels would be raised anyway. And I think Villa tend to sometimes do this anyway. And you see it in football, don't you, that when a side is playing a team that is technically better than them. You know, when you're saying, like, you're coming up against a team that, that's, that's better, normally you'd raise your game for that. So I think that's hopefully what can possibly happen at Villa Park anyway, the game, and, and we will raise our game because we know what's coming anyway, and I think we know the permutations of this game. So I think it's going to be... Um, a really interesting game, and I think there's going to be a lot of goals. I just, in my head, I just see goals. So uh, I just see it's just going to be a bit of a mad one, and I just see a lot of goals. So we'll get into the tail of the, the game now, and then we'll have a little look at it tactically. I want to have a look at this one tactically on, on what I expect and how I think that Aston Villa can potentially go ahead and get a positive result in this game. So uh, let's have a little look at the tail of it. So head-to-head um, -head recently, we've got Villa with 16 wins, Spurs with 25, and we've got nine home wins. They've got 10 away wins. Um, I kind of feel like my Engels moment has gone now that we beat them at, um, at their place. So I feel like a bit more of a... Clear ahead when I look at Spurs. I think I was, um, I just had that vision in my, every time I thought of Villa Spurs, I always thought of that. But now, now I'm thinking a bit more of like McGinn, McGinn and Spurs. So, um, and McGinn always does tend to play good against Spurs. McGinn does really have good games against Spurs. Um, recent meetings, Villa 2-0 win. Uh, that was our, that was our first well, second, we beat United, didn't we? But we had a real impressive away victory against Spurs. Uh, we've had a 4-0 loss, a 2-1 loss, a 2-1 win and a 2-0 loss. Uh, Villa's form, we've got a win, draw, win and two losses. 
they have two losses uh, and then Mason's form is the Spurs 2-2, the Liverpool 4-3 and the Palace 1-0. So uh, I watched them against United and I thought they were very, very poor in the first half. Second half, they came out a, dif a completely different team and it felt like that the crowd dragged them over the line. You know, it was all about the reaction and, the, and they got the positive reaction in that second half. Uh, they had the capitulation at Liverpool where Richarlison looked like he'd snatched the draw and then Liverpool went down the other end and scored. So that was a sickening blow um, and they had a, a good home win against Crystal Palace. Uh, but it wasn't convincing. Um, Aston Villa at eighth, Spurs are sixth. We've won 16, left won 17. Uh, we've both drew six games. We've lost 13 and they've lost 12. Uh, their biggest loss is a 6-1 against Newcastle. This was their match against Crystal Palace on expected threat. So it looked like Spurs were, Spurs were on top uh, and Palace had you know, little ebbs and flows to the game. But I think Spurs edged that game. Uh, the shot map from both teams, Spurs are the blue and Crystal Palace are the grey. Uh, the danger creation was through the middle against uh, Crystal Palace and uh, Palace's danger creation was sort of down that right-hand side a little bit or and the left-hand side. Uh, this is how they set up against... Crystal Palace, and that they're still sticking with the five at the back. The only time this season that they've gone to a four at the back was when they lost 6 1 to Newcastle. So we know they are going to go five or three at the back, however you want to look at it. Uh, and I think there's something that Villa can exploit here. If you have a look at the average positions again, uh, you can see is the three at the back they're offering a lot of width with their two full backs. Uh, and Richarlison, Kane and Son are pretty, pretty narrow. Uh, you can see this from the passing network. So you can see that uh, Hoiberg and Skip are central. They're offering protection through the middle. If you look at how sort of narrow uh, they've got eight players, eight players are pretty narrow. If you're looking at uh, Longley, Romero and Royale, they're pretty central. You've then got a central two, and then you've got another central three, of Richarlison, Kane and Son. And then the only width is coming from out here. And I think there is an area where Aston Villa can exploit. If we just have a look at this graphic now, I'm going to share another graphic with you. And this is going to highlight highlight the gaps a little bit more. You potentially should see it uh, a little bit. If I can make it a bit bigger, there we go. So here's how Spurs are going to set up. They're going to set up with a three, a five at the back, but predominantly when they are with possession, it becomes a three at the back. You've got the protection of the two in the centre. So you've got Hoiberg and Skip, who the ball off the back three are looking to go into, and then they're looking to play the ball out wide um, to offer more width. But as you can see, what we've got are some gaps. And we know that Aston Villa play with a double pivot and two either side of that double pivot. So if you're saying that the double pivot is going to end up in this area, you're going to have the McGinn and the Ramsey in this area. And we know how Moreno wants to play. Moreno wants to bomb forward as well. So I really do think that Moreno can get a little bit of joy in this game as well. So... Tactically, it's going to be a battle and it's a battle that I think Unai Emery will embrace and he'll really want to get the better hand of Mason, won't he? So uh, if we just, what I want to do now is I'm just going to pinpoint uh, how I think Villa will set up on an average position. So on an average position, we know that we're going to look something similar to this. So we're going to have a right back. You're going to have a... Um, Concert and you're going to have Mings. And I think what we're going to want to look to do in this game is we're really going to want to look to push Pedro Porro backwards. We don't want to allow Porro to offer his width down that right-hand side. So we know that Moreno's average positions in games is here. 
So Moreno's average position is here. So if Moreno is going forward, there's still space out wide. So if we can push Poro backwards, that's going to allow them to not get as far forward on that right-hand side. So Moreno, if he can push forward, is going to exploit, potentially exploit. When Poro goes forward as well, we play a ball over the top. That's going to leave them vulnerable because they're only going to have three at the back. You're going to have a double pivot from Villa as well. So the double pivot is going to be in and around this area here. And then look at the space where we're going to have John McGinn and Jacob Ramsey. Space in this midfield. We need to create that box and we need to box them in. We play with that box midfield and I think it's important in this game that we keep it a tight box in there and that should potentially give Villa the opportunity to win the midfield battle. Through here, Jacob Ramsey's going to want a progressive carry like he does through there. And we're also going to have McGinn, hopefully, that can make runs inside. He can make runs out there as well. So that's our midfield. I think we can overpower their midfield. I don't think Spurs are going to spring any surprises on the way that they play. I don't think they're going to counteract how we play in any way. They literally play with this formation and nothing else. They will be looking at it and thinking, we can't change the formation because look what happened against Newcastle. And I think this is how they're going to play. Another opportunity in this game as well is going to be for Ollie Watkins to occupy this space and make his runs down there. So because they're playing with a three at the back, I think this plays into Watkins' hands a little bit because I think recently, because teams have been playing with a four at the back, that's allowed their two centre-halves centre to sort of just double up on him. If you double up on Ollie Watkins in this system that opposition teams are trying to go at at Villa, it sort of nullifies him a little bit. But because Spurs play with a three, Romero has to play a little bit more central Longley has to offer width on this side and Royal has to offer width on this side. So if they go too narrow, there's just there's just space in between their fallback. So I think Watkins can get a lot of joy in this game. He can make curve runs. He can make forward runs. And I think that's how he can get a little bit of joy as well. So the final position is going to be whoever we decide to go with, whether it's Bailey or a Buendia or whoever. I also think if it's Bailey, Bailey can have a little bit of joy in this game if we keep Bailey or a winger hugged on the touchline. But then if it is um, if it is Bailey, then he can go down here, he can go down here, he can cut inside. So I think there's so many different options for Villa to play with in this game. And I think tactically... Tactically, I think Emery's going to nail it. I think he's really going to nail it. And me talking about them tactics, I think, I think we, I think we've just got options on how we play. I think we've got options out wide where they can go down the byline, they can cut inside. If it's Buendia, he can hug the touchline, he can come inside. So I think it's going to be an absolute nightmare for Spurs because I think we're just going to be moving all over the place, and I don't really think they're going to be able to live with the way that we're going to play so hope you've enjoyed that little bit of a, a tactical breakdown let me know your thoughts on on spurs and, and and how they play um so yeah i'm really looking forward to it it's going to be a big game the atmosphere should be absolutely rocking um but you know i think we've got to realize as well and i hope and i think they will that this is a huge, huge game. And we have been handed, in my opinion, a little bit of a lifeline. And I think, by the way, this weekend's football has been absolutely phenomenal. Monday, then games. Everton. Everton were absolutely phenomenal against Brighton. They were brilliant. Hunger, desire aggression 
I loved it. I loved watching Everton against Brighton. They were absolutely magnificent. They're absolutely magnificent. Awobi and Decore and Calvert Lewin, Dwight McNeil, they were remarkable. So we've been handed a bit of a lifeline. The fact that Brighton have got some tough games coming up. Um, and again, they've still got to win those games. So I think that's good for Villa. I think if we can beat Spurs, then we're back on. We are back on. Um, and it's about Villa now rising to this occasion, isn't it? Rising to this challenge. Like, if I was a Villa player now going into this game against Spurs, I'd be absolutely licking my lips because I'd be sat there all week thinking, I'm about to show everybody what we are about when it matters. In this crunch game, in this game that we have to win, let's go out there and show everybody what we are all about. You know, tactically, let's let's follow the game plan. But I want to see, like, the players, like, going up to the whole ten, like, if we've got a corner, like, raising it, showing, like, galvanising the team. Like, I just want to see, like, a full-blooded performance. I want to see crunching tackles going in. I want to, I want to see, like, that 5% that I was saying that was, that was missing, like, that spark, that belief, that desire, that energy, that hunger. I want to see it all on Saturday. I want to walk out that ground thinking, you know what? We absolutely gave everything. We left nothing on we left nothing on that pitch. And that's the type of performance that I think we've got to show. I think what we've got to do is we've got to like Spurs will come to Villa Park thinking that they can win because they've got good players, Kane, Son, you know, they've got good players, but we've got to make them think, oh my God, we are in like, what have we walked into here? Like, we've been like shell-shocked and that's what I think we've got to do, just like we did against Newcastle, just like Newcastle did against Spurs as well, when they played them. I think we've just got to show them that we want it more than what they do. So that's what I'm expecting. Um, and I also heard, like, De Zerbe after the game against Everton. And he did look a bit down and he was frustrated. But even De Zerbe talks about mentality. De Zerbe talked about their players' mentality. And he was saying that forget the football stuff. It was all about the mentality. And they didn't have the mentality. And that was what my point was at the weekend. And that's a Premier League manager talking about his team's mentality. So I think we have they have got to show it. And I, I do think that they will. I really, really do think that they will. Um, and you know, I think as long as as long as we can keep Kane and Song quiet, because they are quality players. Kane and Son, they can do anything in like that, can't they? Literally, one moment, boom. That they, they can do anything because they are that good. As long as we restrict them and we nullify them and play our game plan and territorially we're on top and we we dominate in the game, then I think I think we'll win the game. I think we'll win the game. But we've got to keep them quiet because we know what they're like. There's got to be no mistake because Son. It, it, it looks like he's in a bit more form now. He, he, he's getting on it a little bit. He's, he's dribbling with it a little bit more. Uh, you know, Kane will be trying to drop deep as well. And I think, I think when Kane drops deep, I'd like to see McGinn on him a little bit. Um, so yeah, so I am really looking forward to the game. Uh, thanks everybody who's been watching the channel. Hopefully, hopefully, if all goes well. I've got another new concept which will be coming out next season and I'm going to trial it for the first, for the next three games. So if it works, it's going to be a nice little extra added content for you guys to enjoy. And I think you will like this concept as well. So 
Um, each season, I look to have a new concept each season. So last season, we had, well, the season before, we started like predicted lineup, I think. This season, we brought in the player ratings episode. Um, you know, everything for you to get involved in as well. Actually, we've got two coming next season. Sorry. We've got two. We've got another one that you can get involved with at home, which I think everybody's going to love. And then we've also got an episode-based uh, content coming out, which I will be doing. So that one I'm really looking forward to as well. Uh, so hopefully you should have one of those coming out this week. Uh, so cheers, everybody, for the support. Uh, thanks for all of the nice comments that you give as well. Uh, and a oh, score prediction. I think it is going to be Aston Villa 3, Spurs 1. 3-1 three, one Villa, up the Villa. And uh, subscribe if you know, drop, a, drop your score prediction team. Uh, and we'll have, hopefully, our new concept out tomorrow. Predicted lineup will be Thursday, press conference Friday, and then we'll have all of our match content over the weekend. Up the villa.